Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this awesome gorilla is the new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. When I say new, it is April 1st, 2024, and if you're already in the club, you should have already received a link to download this pattern. If you join the club anytime in April 2024, this is the pattern that you're going to get instantly. And if you're watching this video and it's well past April 2024, you can find the pattern at shinyhappyworld.com. So, Here's how to make him. Okay, this is the video showing you how to put together this gorilla if you do not have or don't like to use a light box. So I've got all of my pieces prepped. They're all cut out. They're cut out on the solid lines and then these dotted lines on the back I have transferred to the front of the fabric. Um, those show me where my applique pieces are gonna go and in the case of the mouth, it shows me a stitching line. So I've got all of those pieces prepped and ready to go. And I just want to point out one thing. This guy is massive. So this is an applique pad a piece where he's going to fall off the edge of the block all the way around. So I wanted this to look like I had snapped a photo of a gorilla and zoomed way in on his face. They have a massive body behind their head. And so I wanted his shoulders to fall off the sides of the, of the snapshot and the rest of his body to fall off the bottom. So he has the rest of his body, it's just not in the photo. And to get that photo kind of look, you want to line those up so that those are those edges, all these square edges, are buried in the seams of your blocks when you sew your blocks together. If you'd rather do your gorilla, what I call emoji style, where you just float the head in the middle of the block, just leave the shoulder piece off. But in order to get that wide, wide view, my blocks finish at 10 inches square, which means I trim them to 10 and a half and I cut them to 11 and my paper is 11 inches tall. But most printers will not print all the way to the edge of the paper and every printer cuts it off in a different place. So what I've done is just extended the lines, the straight line here and the shoulder lines here, you can see this um, this little pink line. I just extended those lines all the way to the top and bottom edge of the paper. And that's how I get that look of that massive, massive gorilla. So here's how we put those pieces together. So we're gonna start with those, that big body piece. And that is gonna line up the bottom edge of our, the raw edge of our block. And it is, I cut my blocks bigger than they need to be. Um, so it's not gonna to extend to the edges, but when I crop this, I wanna make sure to crop off a little bit, just shave a little bit off of each side. So, but I've got them pretty well centered in there right, right now. So big body piece. Next up is his big forehead with a super smart gorilla brain. He's got a big high domed forehead. And you just wanna lay that piece down. As soon as it covers this chalk line that I transferred from the pattern, that's one of those dotted lines, that tells me I've got good coverage there. Good, a good amount of overlap. So right now I can see that chalk line a little bit, so I'm just gonna tuck that down. Perfect. All right, next up, I am going to put the, his eyes, the, the part of his face that goes behind his eyes. And that goes on the top here. Again, just cover up that chalk line. And then the piece where his mouth and nostrils are. Cover up that line. And then I've got a whole bunch of ovals here for nostrils and eyes, but they are all numbered. And the pattern comes with, has a, a placement guide. And this, all of the pieces are numbered. So that'll tell you what is what. So that tells you that the eyes are number five and six. And it doesn't matter which one is which, they are identical. So the two eyes are identical, the two nostrils are identical, but the eyes are different from the nostrils. A little bit different. All right, and then the nostrils are seven and eight. And for this, I just used all different shades of black on black, black on very dark gray. These are all from my Animal Kingdoms uh, blenders. All, these are all elephant blenders. So all of the shades of gray, I call elephant blenders. So it goes all the way from the lightest whites to the darkest blacks. Um, and I've just pulled some of the darkest blacks and darkest grays 
to use as my gorilla. And I just used different patterns uh, to show, to get the difference between all of the body parts. And I chose one of the slightly lighter grays so that his mouth would show up and also a slightly lighter gray so that his eyes would show up. Um, there is a tutorial at shinyhappyworld.com that ha shows you some tips for making dark eyes show up on a dark applique background, but the easiest way to do it is just to make the background just a little bit less dark. So I'm going to carefully carry this over to my ironing board, fuse everything in place, just follow the directions on whatever brand of fusible adhesive you are using. I use heat and bond light for all of my quilts. Then I will outline stitch everything in black. That's going to further help define those pieces. And then I'll bring it here and show you the finished gorilla. All right, and here is one of the finished gorillas that I made. So I made three, and uh, usually I make them with a lot of different colors, but this time I did make them all black, weirdly. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't do fantasy colors, but it would also work really well if you wanted to do some fantasy colors. Some of the eggplant blenders would work great for a really dark purple, and also a really dark blue will read as black if somebody is, um, if you're making a quilt that's a little bit more fantasy colors. But here's one that I did on a bright blue background, but I've got a couple of other versions. So this is a version that I made where I did stitch the eyelashes. So that is an option for you. The eyelashes, you can either stitch them in there or ignore them, whichever one you want. This one's on a nice coral colored background. And then I did one more. And this is a version that I did on a bright, bright green background. I'm working on a collection of all different primates that are going to be in their realistic colors, but on very bright, kind of crayon bright colors in the background blocks. So those are my three versions of the Gorilla Block. That's the April pattern for the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I will see you next time.